I got a question, then I'm gonna pass it to the crew. You're you started it's it's almost like a chicken and an egg situation because you've done music, but you must have been a blurred first. What was okay. what was the inspiration for doing five mics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, my my first my first love growing up was drawing illustration and i still i still can in fact i begged my wife I like, babe i know you didn't know me at the time but before you came into my life i was an illustrator and i need an ipad <laughs> like i need i need an ipad is get it for me you know and we got the ipad and i'm not gonna lie i don't draw as much as i promised her that i would but all of my <laughs> artwork for my albums after 2018 from 2018 up until like a couple years ago right like i did those by hand you know what i mean and so like the the album that hit the billboard chart the album that was you know on that list or this list or whatever like music that i had in um the ford mustang commercial right like i was doing those artworks right and so like drawing coming up with my own characters and stuff like that i went to a uh, uh, over the summer, I went to a school where literally I learned how to make comic books with like people that worked at Marvel and stuff like that, right? So like, don't let the chains fool you. I'm a big nerd, Chris. You're absolutely right. And so <laughs> you know, going from 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 you know drawing and then acting and then creating stories of the things that I was drawing like led me into uh, prose and short stories and long form, and I was writing poetry. And then you know, middle school happened, and it wasn't cool to be a poet in middle school. And so I just put music underneath it and became a rapper so that, I, you know, could just be in the vibe. And then that was it. And so like going to, I went to Columbia University for undergrad hey. and hey. I only, I only, so I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Right. And I went to a school, I went to a predominantly white school and uh, uh, the, Dang I had it. two different, um, I had two different, uh, what do you call them? Guidance counselors. One of them was like, you're not going to amount to nothing. Apply to all oh, of these. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, literally, like, don't, e don't even really apply to school, da, 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 whatever. But like, God gave your boy grace. I switched to a different advisor. And she was like, yo, you could apply to these schools because you're you're in a single uh, single parent household. And, you know, <laughs> y'all don't got no money. Y'all broke. <laughs> y'all been homeless, da, 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 da. Like, apply to these schools. And, you know, you can get like a, a free ride to go to these schools. So I applied to, you know, these schools, whatever. I only went to Columbia because one, they paid for me to go, but two, it's in New York, right? And that's where hip hop is and, you know, all these different things. So I literally went thinking that I was going to go to Columbia and blow up like Lauren Hill did after her first year. That did not happen. <laughs> um, but, 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 you know, me and my homies, we ended up creating uh, the Columbia University Society of Hip Hop. And... Uh, got to open up for Snoop Dogg right before graduating and all these different things. And so it was dope to be a part of that. I stopped rapping because I had a come to Jesus moment. It was crazy. I don't even want to go into discussion on it. I don't want to be recorded talking about it, but it was nuts. I, enough, enough to be like, I ain't a rapper no more. So I threw it all away. I'm homeless after graduating from Columbia University. You know what I mean? Trying to figure out my life. I meet this girl fresh from South Africa, you know, on a on a summer trip ended up being my wife but um she's like yo I'm gonna be a lawyer so I'm like yo I'm gonna be a lawyer and I'm studying for the LSAT trying to pretend to be something I get into hey. education um because I'm looking for a paralegal job and they're like yo you're way too charismatic to be a paralegal why don't you work for the oh, CEO? <laughs> yeah literally this is what they said and I'm great I'm grateful for like honest feedback and so I end up applying for the COO assistant role thinking that this is a downgrade because oh look like the path that I want is not going the way that I want it to go. But, you know, the COO of this company looks at my resume and she's like, wow, every single verb on the beginning is a different word. Like you have a strong attention to detail. You're very analytical. Da, da, da. She's making all these assumptions about my like little poetic resume, gets me the job. She, she went to Harvard Business School. She wrote my recommendation letter for me to go to business school. That's how I ended up in California going to Berkeley Haas for MBA. I'm doing the thing. I'm thinking, yo, I'm about to just go to Deloitte Consultant, have a real job with healthcare and real money. And, oh, yeah. and, and you know, my, my homie back home is like, yo, do you still know how to rap? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> look at my life now, right? Like I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to have real money. Like rappers don't have real money. I'm about to have real money. I'm about to have 
healthcare. Like, <laughs> why? I'm, I'm about to get married after I graduate business school. Like, I'm not rapping about girls. I'm not rapping about money. Like, I'm not, I'm about to have real fit. Like, why would I want to be a rapper, right? This is what I'm telling this man. And he's like, yo, everything that you just said, you could put all of that into music form and be a rapper. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't even have a rap name. Because I, I had a different rap name back in the day. You could Google it, but I prefer you not, right? And uh, he was like, he was, so I was like, I don't even got a rap name. He was like, well, what does your Instagram say? And it literally said, call me Ace, because that's what people have been calling me ever since I was a kid. So he's like, boom, don't even overthink it. Call me Ace is your rap name. And I was like, I was that's grammatically incorrect. And he was like, so is a tribe called Quest. And I was like, dang. I was like, there's, <laughs> why am I talking to this man? He got me into a trap and there's no way out of it. And so <laughs> literally he gave me, he just gave me, he gave me one assignment. He was just like, yo, just. Write a track. Write a track before you go to sleep. See see how you feel. And I did it. And I kid you not, y'all, I fell right back in love like it was nothing. You know what I mean? Like, just everything locked in. I was like, yo, like, I've been waiting to, like, touch this part of my soul. And it's been a minute. And, you know, I'm doing it from this new perspective and all these different things. But I'm like, yo, I'm about to graduate business school. And I'm about to have a corporate job. Like, what am I doing? Am I really about to rap? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> so right before I right before I graduated, right, I'm making music for the school, my alma mater that they still use for admissions to this day. You know what I mean? Getting people to go to their school because it was, I mean, it was you only hustle once. That was the name of the song, right? And so like we're performing at schools, like a thousand people, da 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 da. I graduate and now I'm in Deloitte as a consultant. And I'm like, yo, I want to rap. I don't want to be a consultant. And so <laughs> I hear about, I know, order of priorities, right? And so I hear I hear about how John Legend used to be a rapper at Boston, Boston Consulting Group for a year. And then he got signed to, you know, good music and did Ordinary People's Got Grammys and stuff like that. I was like, yo, bet, I'm going to be him. I, I was like, this the same play that I tried to make at Columbia. I was like, this is exactly what I'm going to do at Deloitte. That did not happen. But I tried my best. I ended up going from Deloitte to Facebook, to Google slash YouTube, but all the while the music was growing as well. And I talked to somebody along the journey who was also working in this corporate world. And I was like, yo, when do you, when do you stop doing one or the other? And she was like, when one calls for more attention than the other. And I don't know if it's because I just have a, I'm Jamaican and I have a very mm -hmm. large tolerance for like work, <laughs> but it never felt like, one called for more attention than the other. I just did both at the same time. And so for eight years, I was I was making albums called Return to Office, Out of Office, Working from Home, before people was actually working from home. Then the pandemic <laughs> happened and I just made Working from Home extended. You know what I mean? Like it was just, but like this was my like content that I was making because I'm just rapping about my life, right? Like if you hear my music, I'm I'm rapping about my life because it wasn't about trying to be something I'm not. It was like, I already have a job that's making me money. So I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because there's just something that I wanted to share, right? But I'm a big nerd, man. And when the pandemic hit, I mean, I've had this idea for five mics ever since a kid, because I've been playing Hearthstone and Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Marvel versus, uh, uh, man, there was this one Shadow Era. You know, I played them. Yu Yu Hakusho had a trading card game once before. I played, you know, NBA 2K and Madden too, because I'm from the streets. But like, I played <laughs> these on the low. You know what I mean? I played these to like express myself, you know? And I was like, yo, I have homies from the hood that I tried to convince to play Yu Gi Oh! And they're like, ah, you know, or try to play uh, a Dragon Ball Z, the CCG. And they're like, ah, I like the show, but you know. And I was like, yo, what if, what if I asked myself this? This is like literally right before I hit the billboard chart at Facebook, right? I was like, yo, what if instead of dragons and magicians, you have rappers and what like superpowers, you know? And, and that was the context of the card game. And it was just a small idea that literally possessed me for years. And I was just tinkering, making this game. I've made games before, but just, you know, it wasn't publicized. I wasn't trying to like do it. You know what I mean? But like this one, I mean, it just overtook me. You know what I mean? And so anyway, long story short, Five Mics was born. because <laughs> Pandemic happened. I was stuck. I'm doing music, but like you couldn't perform. I had all these creative juices. Didn't know what to what to do with it. Started really funneling, uh, uh, funneling all of it into this. 
somebody was like, yo, you got to make this happen. I spoke to an investor. He was like, yo, you need to do this right now. I started going to game conferences. It was like, yo, I would play this right now if you had it. One thing led to another, yo, and here we are. The end. I, I didn't know what <laughs> questions you had for me. I just wanted to get like five of them at the same time. You know yeah. what I mean? 